Welcome back, everybody. This is your three-man booth. We are 10 weeks through the NFL season. I'm Dan Salem with Phil and Bud. And every good team we thought was good kind of keeps losing, so I don't feel like I know much of anything about this league right now. How are you guys? Well, good. We're freezing our asses off over here in the Northeast. As you can tell, we're walking hoodies. Yeah, and I, I'm in Palm Springs, California, so it was a nice 85, 90 degrees today, so I, I got no complaints. <laughs> it's cool for the desert, but... Like it's like twenty four degrees right now where I live in North. So, so you're saying you didn't go swimming in the pool? <laughs> no, no, no. There's no pool. And I and I broadcast this in in a in a, a three season room, so there's no heat in this room. Ah. And it is uh, it is cold. <laughs> it is cold in here. I would take pity, except I actively moved away from that climate. So <laughs> you, don't, you don't care. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> we appreciate it. But you guys were, were close to the Jets Giants action. You got you got there in person. Two um relatively bad teams playing a good football game, maybe. maybe. You know, it's incredible how much money we spent on Sunday to watch two shitty teams with a combined three wins at that point. But you got to see two potential future star quarterbacks, maybe, which is kind of cool. Two two beers was thirty six dollars. Wow. No, three beers. Three beers. Three, oh, three beers. Yeah, it's 12 each. Yeah, okay, 12 each, yeah. And those are not big beers by any means, I can imagine. They, I were, six, they were 16 ounce, 16 ounce Bud, Light, Bud Lights. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you, you got to milk it a little no. bit. That's good. <laughs> I mean, but, but it's a 16 ounce Bud Light that we paid $12 for. Right. So I got to see a few pictures, and you were there early tailgating. That's got to be fun. I haven't really done that. That's the best part of football is going for early for the tailgating. I mean, we were there before the doors opened. That's how early we got there. <laughs> we, were wait, we were waiting in line for them to open the, the gate. And it was, it was amazing because when we pulled into the parking lot, there was already a lot of cars there. It wasn't like we were – because we were what, – what do you think, Phil? We were probably, what, 50 cars back, 25 cars back? Yeah, but that was, that was by choice, though. Yeah, but no, no, no. What I mean is, like, we were in the line of, of getting into. Oh, we yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. About we weren't we weren't that far off the front of the line. Yeah. The parking lot was was pretty busy at that point. Listen, the tailgating is always fun. Yeah. We had a great time. Uh, went to the stadium, and uh, that's when uh, that's when the depression set in. So, um, so was it? It was a Jets home game, but was it was it predominantly green, or was it? It was it was a mix. I would say this was about 80 percent blue. Okay. And, and I will blue. say, oh, I, I, I was going to say I, I was a little disappointed on the crowd at the beginning of the game. You look around, you're like, where the hell is everybody? Right now, now they all came by the end of the first quarter, early second. But it's like, I mean, this, there were there were sections that were empty. It's like, where, where are these people? I guess they're outside tailgating because they knew the game wasn't going to be any good. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to figure. Because I mean. That's Absolutely. common out here, but, <laughs> but, they, but they, they missed they missed a pretty good first quarter by the Jets. I mean, listen, whenever whenever the Jets like so like on um, when the Jets get a first down, you know the the, the loudspeaker guy comes on and goes, "It's the Jets," and then everybody's supposed to say first down. There was like right. fifteen minutes at first down, and then when the Giants were scoring, the whole stadium <laughs> was going crazy. I mean, everybody in our section except for maybe like fifteen people were all Giants fans. It's it just <laughs> yeah. You know, and this goes back to this goes back to things that I constantly harp on, and and I, maybe I sound like just a, a grouchy, bitter Jets fan. I I personally think that there are two teams in the NFL that clearly do not have home field advantages: the LA Chargers and the New York Jets. The LA Chargers have everybody else in God's creation, and then like fifteen of their fans. That that entire and now I, I know it's New York versus versus New York, but every Jets game that I go to, it is primarily the other team that is in that stadium. There's never a home field advantage. Well, I'll tell you, when it comes to the Jets at all because it's it's because they're both in big cities, so it attracts people from around the country. And then, like the Jets are bad, I feel like if the Jets were actually good, then the Jets fans would probably make sure they turned out. But they're all selling their tickets, and there's plenty of rivals to buy them. So it's yeah. it's it's funny though because when the Jets are good, the, the fans will show up. But they haven't been good for for years. No, no, it's been a while. Like, you know, when Rex was the coach, like he was very boisterous. Like he he said, "I want you guys to be here. I want you guys to be in the seats early. I want I want to hear loud." And people listen to that. People people yeah. 
Jets fans are attracted to that. Yeah. It, it said we got Adam Gase, you know, who, who makes challenges that I can't, even, I can't even begin to tell you how mad he was pissed. He was me and my brother were while he's well, challenging these plays with two minutes left in the game with three timeouts. Like, you might as well just give away your timeout. It was a one-score game. It was a one-score game at that point, too. Well, I would say he's still learning, except his, this is like his fifth year in the league. So, I mean. but they, were so they were such, like, obvious calls that were not going to get overturned. He's like, oh, let me throw the flag anyway. But it's like, what the heck are you doing? It's like you, you just threw away two timeouts. Well, so, so I, I didn't get to watch – the whole game because I was driving to Palm Springs. I was streaming it off my phone in the car, which was pretty cool. I, I, I had it up on the dash. So it was kind of a fun experience. Were you driving? I was not driving. No, I, I was oh. a passenger. I'm going to drive home. So we switched. Okay. We switched. So, um, so I wasn't driving and I was watching the game. And so I turned it on right after the Jets scored their first touchdown, which was cool. And then I saw him go up 14 that nothing. Was, that was, an, I will give that. That was a nice fake by Sam and running in the end zone. That little, that was a fake. That was a good touchdown. I, I, we were harping on them for not starting games with like a game plan, and this is three or four games in a row where they've just marched down the field and scored now, with, and which is, oh, this is something. And Bud was saying this. He goes, "Everyone's getting excited on the first drive." And Bud goes, "Guys, this happens every single week. The first fifteen plays are scripted." I was thinking, I I heard Bud in my head when they went up fourteen nothing, being like, "Yeah, just wait, just wait." And then I look, and it's like twenty one fourteen, and I'm like, Ugh. "But." Um, and then I was on the other side saying. This has happened the last four, three out of four weeks where the Giants spot their teams 14 points yes. and, and M coming back, which is exactly what happened here. Yeah. And I got, I got to be honest, that Daniel Jones strip sack fumble for a touchdown was the difference. It was a seven-point game. And, like, I, that, the Giants are going to be dangerous next season if he can correct those mistakes in the offseason. He's got ball control issues right now, which he's a rookie, and it's hard to work on that midseason. But that's something that's easily fixable if, if he's yeah. – Got the right. I, will, I will say this: that Daniel Daniel Jones looked every bit. Yeah. Other than other than, so he got he had two fumbles. He lost one, and and Saquon picked up the other one. Right. Yeah. Right. Were, I think he had one pick too. Right. One pick. No, 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 pick. no pick. Oh, okay. He, he threw for four touchdowns. Yeah. He looked every bit of the part. His offensive line, although it's bad, he has plenty of time. Oh, um, you- <laughs> he makes he makes a. <laughs> Phil, Phil laughs because he was he was sitting next to me, just driving me insane. He, <laughs> he, he makes plays with his feet. Like he is, he is the if he can clean up the turnovers, the Giants are going to be really good. And I will say this: that if if the Jets were not able to completely shut down Saquon Barkley, which was amazing to me, yeah, he only had one yard of rushing. The the Giants would have would have crushed the Jets. Yeah, because. They, they, they turned turn into a one-dimensional football team, which on the flip side, the Jets are turning into a one-dimensional football team because Le'Veon Bell can't get shit going. No, everyone shuts him down. But I'm really happy. Like, all the articles about Darnold the last couple of weeks are how he's stepping up and, like, taking an active role and telling their coach, be quiet, taking control of the huddle. And I'm like, yes, the only way this works is if he actually steps up and leads. And Jones is leading the Giants, but – this is this is positive steps for both these teams. I think I'm really encouraged after considering the, the season's lost. But um, but then he comes out and says they they can make the playoffs. So, I mean, it, but you know what? Technically, they're not eliminated yet. No, I know, I know. Technically, which is, which is insane to even think about. I mean, they yeah. they have a relatively easy back end schedule, but they still got to play teams like the Raiders, who the Raiders could win the, the, the AFC West right now. And, and the Ravens. They got the Ravens once, I think. The, the Ravens are going to score 100 points against the Jets, I guarantee you. Yeah. Um, but, but the Jets do. They, I mean, they went out and they probably are, got a chance. And I, and I appreciate the confidence. I mean, the Giants are in a, a less favorable boat. But that division, I think, five and four is leading it. That's nothing to be excited about. So, no. the, I don't think their schedule's not easy, but they're not out of it either. So, um, no, but it's a shame because if the if the Giants could finish games and not give not give fourteen point leads in the first quarter of these past three or four weeks, Daniel Jones has the ability to lead this team to victories. And yeah. the defense is just no good. The defense is terrible. And in a very winnable division, I mean nothing nothing says, you know, that the Eagles and the Cowboys are light years ahead of them. No. I, I 
I think when we collectively look at like these teams that are kind of like middle or really, like it comes down to one thing, like coaching is terrible. Yeah. Like Gase is, aw- Gase is awful. Um, what's the name of the Dermer. Giants? Dermer. Dermer. He's terrible. Um, the By coach- the way, speak- speaking of Gase, I, you, you told me there was going to be a plane above MetLife Stadium that's just playing the Gase behind it. I didn't see I it. I was disappointed. I, I didn't see it. I heard that, that they hired it, but maybe they kept it out of the airspace. Maybe, maybe they did. I mean, I saw – dude, I saw video of this plane picking up the banner. <laughs> I, I was all excited. It. And flying it to New York. You like, know what, what, we, what we did see, because it was, it was Veterans Day, they were celebrating Veterans Day. We walked in the stadium, we saw four guys parachuting into the stadium out of a, out of a helicopter, which was kind that of That was neat. pretty cool. That's cool. Did you get in for autographs? You were there early or no? No. No, no, we, we, no. but at some point, I think there's going to be video of me and Bud kicking field goals at MetLife Sta- uh, you know, outside of MetLife Stadium. I don't know if those videos have surfaced yet, but we definitely took them. Lori yeah. has them. Lori has okay. them. Uh, I think everybody went one for two. Yep. Um, you got up a field goal post? Oh, there, there's an like, enormous life-size field goal post outside of the 50-yard line outside. Oh. Yeah. You can go out there and you can throw, like, um, NFL footballs and, like, you could try to hit, like, into a hoop. And Oh, cool. Very yeah, cool. It's, it's pretty cool. We, got, we, actually went in, we actually went in 45 minutes early, so we could try to do that. So <laughs> – three old men can try kicking field goals. Yeah. After we after we've had a bunch of bourbons and beers and cigars and so, food and all, you know, we try to kick field goals. But right. yeah, well Bud, you said that you had like a script, right? You get really drunk and then by the third quarter you get in a fight with your wife and then you have an angry ride home. But the Jets won. So so how did that play out for you? <laughs> Everything was fine. Okay. Lori was busy shopping. What happened? So Lori was too busy shopping on her phone next to you. Yeah, Lori, Lori was working on her phone. She was trying to talk to me in the middle of the game. Like, Sam, Sam Darnold's in the shotgun, and she's trying to talk to me. I'm like, but she, you know, she, she's a trooper. I, it was pretty cold in the parking lot. Like, it was really cold. Yeah. Because there's nothing, there's nothing to cut down the wind. But Yeah. Well, that's fun. I mean, there was a lot of disappointment around the league, Phil, so your team wasn't alone. I know that they probably – could have, should have beat the Jets, but um. yeah. But you know, like we said, it's it's the season's lost, but it's a learning season. So I I'm really not even that disappointed about it. Yeah. No, no. I gotta ask because the Falcons look pretty damn good on Sunday. Do you think they turned a corner, or was this just like the Matt Ryan return game? Like I'm kind of thinking that they're not nearly as bad as their record was dictating because they totally shut down the the Saints, and that can't be a fluke. Wasn't this Drew Brees' first game back from injury, though? Was that his first one or was it his second one? No, no. Yeah, he played before their bye, and then this was Matt Ryan's first game back. Though. Yeah, no, I know. I, I was just trying to see if, if it was Drew Brees just getting back into rhythm. But, I, I, I mean, on the offensive side, Atlanta has a lot of talent. It's the defense that can't stop anybody, but that you wouldn't have known that watching it on Sunday. They stopped Kamara, then Brees, and – or Michael Thomas, like they stopped all of them. I mean, I think I think what we what we saw there is just a great team having a bad day. I mean, I I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't chalk that up to anything. I don't. I'm not sold on Atlanta. Um, I just think that New Orleans had a bad day. Yeah, I guess and, I, just, I wrote yeah. them off, so I don't know if I can do that anymore. Uh, and those are also division rivals, so they know each other very well. Yeah. Well, you'll probably see Atlanta get cream next week. I don't, I don't know who they're playing, but they'll probably no, see they got, So I, I liked them. They got six against an uh, okay team. They're getting six points, so I liked them plus six. I forget who they're facing. They're playing, they're playing Carolina. Oh, Carolina, yeah. So, I mean, Carolina's got a really good defense, but I guess I liked Atlanta plus six. I don't know if I like them to win up outright. But. Well, Chris McCaffrey's going to run all over them, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I, another team I, I feel like – well, we'll get into the losses later, but New England plays the Eagles, and I just feel like the Patriots are going to absolutely humiliate Philadelphia. I don't know if that's just me, but the, the, Eagles, the Patriots don't lose after a bye week, and I know the Eagles are off their bye too. But yeah, but it's also, they also have the worst secondary in the entire league. Yeah. Well, well, I guess we'll really see if Tom Brady has hit a wall or not against the Eagles secondary because they should pick him apart. But uh, – See, see the, the, the downside about being at the game is that we only get to watch one game. We didn't get to flip through and see everything else. So I, I know most of what happened around the league, but I didn't yeah. get to see anything other than what I was watching from my seats. The stadium had the – during the commercials and stuff, they have red zone. They, they play yeah. it on the big That's screen. Cool. 
for, yeah. Yeah, for a couple minutes, but that was that's it. But well, I mean, I, the Chiefs. I mean, I think the Titans got a pretty damn good defense, and they slowed down Kansas City more than enough. I know this was Mahomes' first game back, but I think that was more of the Titans are pretty damn good as a as opposed to the Chiefs not as good as we think. Um, so, so Miami won again. Yeah, Miami won again. So, is this is Fitzpatrick, right? His magic working a little bit longer. I mean, he it, it is. It might it have makes, potential. It makes, you, it makes you wonder if this team would have won more games if he wasn't benched for Rosen and then Rosen being benched back yeah. for Fitzpatrick, right? Because yeah. the, the team doesn't have that much talent around them, but he he tends to play. Yeah. Well, and, and the, the Colts were without their starting qu- quarterback. Yeah. Brissett was ben- on the bench. But um, but their, their line is down to three points this week now, Miami, after getting like double digits the whole first – Third of the season. Well, they gotta they gotta play Buffalo this week. Yeah, but it's only like I mean I, the Bills lost to Cleveland, and I kind of thought the Bills were a little overrated after the first month because they didn't play much anybody, and I'm not sure their defense is as good as we thought. Um, Cleveland stinks. So, <laughs> and, and aside from and aside from Baltimore beating the absolute crap out of Cincinnati, there was a lot of low scoring games. I feel low yeah. P- P- Pittsburgh's defense is really good. They eked out a win over the Rams, which was impressive. Rams, Rams, are, you want to talk about Super Bowl hangover. Oh. That, that team is done. The Rams are done. Cooks has got a, Cooks has got a concussion. Gurley, you can't even find him. And, and golf is just regressing like well, crazy. Well, because, the, because the Seahawks and the 49ers are both playoff teams, there's no way they're making it. So Yeah, no, that's, it's just it's, – it, I don't know. Last year they were putting up points hand over fist, and this year yeah. it's – I mean, it's a tale of two seasons here. This is Goff's third year, uh, right? What's that? This is Goff's third year, right? Fourth year. Fourth, okay. Because then I, maybe- I, also think, I, I, I also think the league has figured out Sean McVay's wonderful offense. Yeah. Would you take him as your football coach, Phil? McVay? Yes. Last year, yeah. This year, I don't know, maybe. Last year, oh, he looked, wow. last year he looked like a genius. This year, well, yeah. what, he's not that special about him right now. Well, I mean, he's also, he's also without base. You know, you, you said it, like his running back is MIA. He doesn't have... Cooper Cup had zero catches. Did he even play this week? But, that, but that's not on. No, he played. He had no. He had no. But that's not on coaching, though. Yeah, the coach. The, this, these coaching conversations are difficult because the Jets got like thirteen guys on IR. They just threw two more on today. Chris Herndon again and Winters. And Brian Winters. Every, like every starting offensive lineman for the Jets, I think hit is hit IR. Oh. <laughs> that's not coaching, but right. the coach still so- looks bad. I know. I, I like Sean McVay. I just. This is just a down year for them. They'll probably still finish above 500, I would expect. Um, it, it, really, it really feels like the elite teams are – you know who they are, and then it's just a huge gap, and then everybody else. That, that's really what it feels like to me. Well, there's four elite teams in the NFC. I mean, Minnesota, Green Bay – oh, I guess five. New Orleans, San Francisco, and Seattle. So that's almost the entire playoff picture. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that feels like it's almost filled out, and then some yeah. other team will sneak in as the, as the second wild card. And yeah. then it's just – it's everybody else. There, there's no – I don't know. It's, well, it's, that it's game last night was awesome. It was an awesome football game to watch. Yeah. I, wish I, didn't fall, I wish I didn't fall asleep and I stayed up to watch it. Well, San Francisco missed the winning field goal, right, in overtime, and then Seattle hit it. But then San Francisco tied it at the buzzer, so, I mean, you can't. It was, great, it was a great football game. But, like, you know, there, there are these debates, like, San Francisco hasn't played anybody, and then they finally have to play the real teams now. And now what? I mean, they could have easily beaten Seattle. I mean, they had opportunities. You know, every, nobody's given yeah. Garoppolo a, a chance. I mean, for, he had two interceptions yesterday. Both of those interceptions went right through the receiver's hands. Like, yeah. if it hits your hands, you got to catch the ball. Well, I mean, they got a really good defense. And I gotta assume they got a good offensive line because they're running the football well. So that's kind of the formula in the NFL this season between the haves and have-nots. Uh, I, I like the 49ers. Um, I, well, so I didn't think the NFC was decided, right? But it pretty much is. Like we just said, the AFC was decided a month ago. I'm not sure it is anymore. Besides the Patriots and Ravens, it's kind of. I don't know. I mean, the the, Ra- the Ravens look like the best team in the AFC. Um, yeah. what, what they did to the Giants, um, what they did to the Patriots a couple of weeks ago, and what they did this week to Cincinnati. Oh, Cincinnati is terrible. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're on, but, but I'm just thinking, Oakland's only a game behind Kansas City. That division is up for grabs. It's unbelievable. How about, uh, Tennessee, how about Tennessee beating Kansas City? Yeah. 
Tennessee made a ballsy move by benching Mariota, and they are light years a better football team than they were with Mariota as their quarterback. And then that's Ryan Tannehill, guys. I know. You, you were getting on Tannehill, and, like, I know. I mean, he's, he's making the most of his opportunity here. I mean, who knows if this will last, but – uh, well, but so, so we can't sleep on the Texans, but then, yeah, Tennessee still looks really good, and um, not Jackson, <laughs> Jacksonville, no, but uh, oh, Indianapolis, I don't know if I, yeah, I guess it's the, the Texans and the Titans, I don't Indianapolis, know. Indianapolis right now, you can't really tell because Brissett's out. Yeah. I mean, if Brissett plays that game, they, they don't lose to Miami. Well, and I don't know what to make of Buffalo, because Josh Allen's not really doing much of anything either way. That team's kind of just this. I don't it's almost like they hit their plateau and now they're just kind of, you know. You can't coast it. It's like they – it's like – it's like they're one of those teams that hit their peak in the first couple of weeks and yeah. they've slowly come back down to earth. You know, they hit their peak already. They got a little bit of a hard stretch coming up to Buffalo. They got to play – Yeah. Uh, they got to play Miami, Denver, which – Okay. Then they got to play Dallas, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, New England, and then the Jets. Well, so Denver's got a good defense. And, I mean, Dallas, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, New England's tough, tough run of teams. That's a couple of really good defenses. Um, so, this, I, I don't know, this popped in my head. Which coaches are getting fired? Like, because you said the Cowboys, and I'm like thinking, I, I just feel like Jason Garrett's like this close to losing his job. He's. I, I have to think, and Phil, you, you pr- you're probably chomping at the bit of this because you hate Dallas. <laughs> da- Dallas has enough talent on their team that they should not be a 500 football team every year. So it's got, it's got to come down to coaching. It's got to come down to this guy is just – he hasn't been good for years. I don't even know why he's still, he's still the coach. I think he's um, married to one of Jerry Jones's like, grandchildren or something. <laughs> well, it's it, – He's got to go. Like he's in the family. But, he's uh, got to go. He's um, – Well, so do you think Cleveland's going to fire their coach again? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. I think the Jets keep Gase another season. I think they – they because of the injuries. And if this continues on the path it's heading, I don't think Gase loses his job. But um, I agree on Cleveland. I mean uh, – I think, I, think, uh, I think the Giants will be looking for a new coach. Oh, that would be such a bummer for Jones to lose his coach, but I, I don't disagree with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to go out there. He pro- he'll probably get one more year, right? Because you're not going to – like you said, you're not going to give him another coaching change. I, I think he gets at least one more, one more crack at this. Well, let's, let's – I have the list right here. Let's take a look. Okay. Atlanta, you got to think, think Quinn's gone, yeah. right? But he'd be a hot hire, I think, because he, he's still got that Super Bowl appearance. Yeah. Uh, Carolina? Mm, they're trending in the right direction. They're right in the playoff hunt. Well, I think it, if Rivera keeps his job, I think it's it's pretty safe to say oh, Newton's right. gone. Rivera's been there for the entire Newton tenure. So. Uh, Chicago? <laughs> oh, I, I think they give him another season. He had uh, such a good first rookie year, right? Cincinnati? I, oh, no, that guy's done. Yeah, but he's, he's a first-year head coach. He's never, he's never been a head yeah. coach. Yeah, but you're winless. If they don't win a game, that's tough. <laughs> all right. Uh, Cleveland, I think we all agree yes on Cleveland. Dallas, I think we all agree Dallas needs to change. Denver? Mm. Uh, Denver's got a new, a new age coach. And they have no quarterback, so. Yeah, I think that they're, they seem patient. I mean, there's more news about Elway being let go as GM than the coach at this point, so. Uh, let's see here. Du, 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 du. Jacksonville. Oh, no, I, I'll, I'll go no on that because you, you lost Nick Foles, the guy you gave $70 million to, whatever, he, whatever you pay him. Yeah. And you didn't have for half a season. So. Eight, eight teams fire their coach every year. I, I agree Jacksonville keeps theirs, but we still got to get eight. So. Chargers. Oh, yeah. That, Under, you, underachieving team. That whole team's about to be blown up because I don't even know if Phillip Rivers comes back next year. He's on the last year of his contract. No, and, and for them to completely hit reset as they move into the new stadium, new city, it's not such a bad idea. So, Because Philip Rivers is a synonymous with San Diego in my mind. So they kind of – yeah. <laughs> uh, Giants, Jets. I think we both oh, we don't like to see a change. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Well, Miami's keeping their guy. He's a rookie, and then, so. And then Washington. Oh, yeah. I, you, oof. I don't know. I mean, so they, they now finally get – didn't they already fire the guy and then this is the interim? Well, then I don't think he keeps the job. Oh, I don't think they – I, I think uh, – wait, is Gruden still there? Jay no. Gruden? No, no, no. He's gone. He, got, he just got fired. He yeah. got fired. Oh, all right. So this is – all right, so this is the interim guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they, he probably doesn't keep it. Unless Haskins, like, blows it out of the water, which I don't see happening. No. I, I mean, I think the Jets are going to humiliate him next week. I'm not sure that they'll blow out Washington by any means, but I think that they'll humiliate Haskins. Uh, at least they'll, they'll try. So that, that's all, that's all I, I got here. Yeah. Now, the real question will be, is, does Mike Tomlin come back in Pittsburgh? Because the reports are is that Washington wants him, but they'd have to give up some sort of comp- compensation pick. Similar to what the Patriots had to do to the Jets to get Belichick. Interesting. Does he want to leave, you think? I mean, it's probably a good time to move on. He's been there for like, he's been there for what, 13, 14 years? Yeah. And they're about to start a complete rebuild, too. You lost Bell, you lost Brown. Who knows if Roethlisberger's even coming back? I mean, that, that's that that's, they got the. Yeah, I mean, Mason Ross, okay. Yeah. But Washington's not that appealing to me. They're a dumpster fire of an organization. So. Oh, the whole so from top to bottom, they might be the worst organization in, in, in the entire sport. Miami's bad, but at least they have a plan. Washington has no plan. I was impressed with the Dolphins and how they rallied around their coach after going 0-6 or 0-7, whatever it was. Like that team was super excited to beat the Jets. Like you you think they would have given up already because we knew they were tanking, but they did not. So. Oh, but it, the, the players, the players aren't tanking. They, they, they're still trying. You're like Bud said, they may not be as talented as everybody, but at least they're trying. Yeah. But when you're, when your front office trades away, all your best guys, like one every week, someone has gone. That's demoralizing. Right. I, I agree with that. You're right. But that gives them even more incentive because remember all these guys are auditioning for their next team. Any yeah. of these guys that are on that team right now will not be there after this rebuild is complete. Yeah. So they're all, they're all auditioning for other teams right now. We'll talk about Jamal Adams realizing that he needed to audition and then just taking it to the Giants. He had the best game of his career. <laughs> well, he's still on the contract. So, I mean, either either they trade him in the offseason or he goes up to camp or he holds off for a new contract, one or the other. I mean, I, mean, this, I, I think the Jets would be foolish to trade him unless they can get a massive return. Yeah, because he's he's by far their their best player when yeah. he plays. Two weeks ago against the Dolphins, he just he decided not to show up, and it was very clear that he yeah. decided not to show up. Well, I don't I don't think you can turn down two number one picks, but anything less than that, and I would why, rather they keep them. Um, well, they, so did you see that? They turned out on one and two twos. Right. So there was an article, but did you see the 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 article about the Cal? The, so they were trying to say Jamal Adams wanted to go to uh, Dallas, right? And I, I guess one of the scenarios was whatever number of picks and one of the linemen. I don't know if it was Zach Martin or Lyle Collins. But oh, they came out and said, thank God that trade didn't go, on, go through. Did you see that? Oh, I didn't. Oh. Yeah, so the Dallas Cowboy lineman said, thank God that that trade didn't go through because he, he would have been on his way to the Jets. <laughs> I Listen, think it was I, Zach take, I would take Zach Martin in a second. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know you would. I'm saying, I, think, I think that was the one who it was, but. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I mean, the Jets need to build up their lines, both sides of the ball. So you got to do what you got to do. I mean, I think there was a report that Bell was really close to being traded, but the contract was just too much money for the team that wanted him. I mean, he's it's a big one. It's for one of Kansas City. I mean, you get a couple of number one picks for Bell too. I mean, that's he's later in his career. Later, it's it's hard to pass that up. I don't know if, if anyone would. Stupid enough to dole that out, but well, they need to they need to figure out how to to, to get Le'Veon Bell more involved in the offense. And eighteen yeah. carries, you know, weeks ago I said that he was he was getting the ball too much. Well, there's there's got to be a happy medium, right? I'm not saying the guy needs to touch the ball forty times a game, but sixteen times a game is clearly not enough. No. And like I said on Sunday, watching it live, they're a one dimensional football team, which yeah. is. Crazy. The thing about as bad as the Jets are, they are a passing first football team because their their offensive line is so bad they can't run the football. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a hole, and then it's gone in a second. There's no blocking. No, no. Basically, um, the guys are just kind of standing there, and and three seconds is the amount of time it takes the defender to get around them. So the Giants that's happened. The Giants blitz maybe like ten times all game, and they were rushing four people and getting significant pressure on him all game. 
There's yes. five. There's five offensive linemen, and you only rushing four people. Well, I'll be honest. They they need more than five because they got practice squad players starting for them now, and it's just a shame. But at least our GM is a, a line first guy, and maybe he can fix it because he got to do something. Well, they're, they 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 they're not going to have a ton of cap cap space. No. Well, that's why they got these assets. They could try to finagle. I mean, I like building through the draft. I think it's smart. It works if you're good at drafting. Obviously, Mike McCagnan was not very good at drafting besides hitting on Jamal Adams and Sam Darnold, but those are number one picks, so it's kind of hard to miss them. Right. At least the tailgating was fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you enjoyed that. In 2023 – I don't want to hear any excuses. You're flying out here, and we're going to Jets Giants in 2023. Okay. No, no excuses. Okay. I will. We're giving, we're giving we're you a four vacations. year heads up, Dan. Four years. Yeah. Okay. I don't can book any vacations. I will book my vacation to see the Jets play the Giants. You <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Stay at my house. It'll, it'll be, it's an easy drive. Yeah. Uh, 40, 40 minutes, it felt like 20. It was quick. It actually was really quick. That's well, good. Very cool. Yeah, I would, I would like that. I have never seen – no, no, that's not true. I went to see the Jets play the Patriots once, and I probably <laughs> – it was memorable for all the wrong reasons, but <laughs> I got, like, beer thrown at me and yelled at. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Patriots fans aren't too kind. Well, you saw it up at Foxborough. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they were not too kind. So. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't even do that. I, I wanted to go. I think – I'm trying to remember. You know, it's my only time I've actually gone and watched football NFL game in person. It was cold. And they got yelled at. Was it Gillette or was it Foxborough? No, Foxborough, Foxborough. So you were sitting on the on – the oh, no, Sorry, no, no, Gillette is in Foxborough. I'm confused. It's the new – it's the current stadium. The old, the old Foxborough had the metal bleachers. It was like, really cold. In October there, I don't. I think it was still at Stadium though. I, I, it was like it's hard to remember. It was like 10, 12 years ago, something like that. Longer, fifteen years ago. I'm dating myself. I shouldn't do that. It was it was a while ago. We weren't very good. That doesn't say much either, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, I I don't know what to expect from this week eleven, except that the Jets probably. Can beat Red the White the Redskins and the Giants on a bye can't lose on a bye so I I don't know maybe Barkley can actually get healthy he seems like he's just been hobbled he keeps playing getting hobbled so I, I hope I hope he's injured because if that's the game plan that the Giants are going to move forward with they're not going to win many football games because they need to get him more involved in, in the game well, I mean he was he was he was yeah. a complete not I mean what Philly had what one catch he had that one catch for like twenty yards. But that was it. I mean, he yeah. had yeah, he he had he had like three or four catches, but yeah, one yard on the ground is that's not that cool. terrible. I I don't think he's a hundred percent healthy from his high ankle sprain, and th- I don't know if this would have been the seventh or eighth or ninth week from the original injury. But I mean, that's the timetable. Yeah, yeah, yeah he came back and he toughs it out, but he probably isn't a hundred percent. Which I mean, you can say that about anybody at this yeah. point. But well, both of these teams, like they really wanted to beat one another for the headlines and for confidence, right? And so obviously everything's like. Should they fire Shermer or the Giants? They're a train wreck after they lose to the Jets, and the Jets are all got positive headlines. It's stupid. But they, these teams need to win from a confidence standpoint, but they're really hurting their draft positioning, and they could both use top five picks. It's really a tough situation. Like, you, you don't want to – you're not going to intentionally lose. The Jets are probably, like, going to stumble into a couple more wins like they did against the Giants. But I'd love another top five pick. It'd do, no, it'd do wonders for us. Uh-huh. Great. Yeah, so, uh, but it's likely the Giants finish outside of the top five, too, at this point. They, they got too much talent to – And they'll probably stumble because they have to play Miami and, and Washington again. And so they have a few more winnable yeah. games in their schedule. So, yeah, they'll probably fall into a couple more wins. I mean, I think Cincinnati's probably going to not win a game. They seem to be positioning themselves to, like, go winless and secure that top pick. Washington's likely got the number two pick. I don't know, after that, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I mean, Cincinnati, they got to play the Jets, and I got to think that the Jets can beat them. Yeah, I mean, that rookie quarterback didn't look great. So, uh, I mean, the only, the only winnable game left on Cincinnati's schedule is Miami. 
Mm. So if Fitzpatrick gets hit his wall by then, that might be a winnable game for the Bengals because he, he hits that wall and then throws a lot of picks. But we never know when it comes. It almost it lasted oh, 15 of 16 games when he was the Jets quarterback. So, and then he hit the wall and they missed the playoffs, which was a real shame. Uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> Thanks for watching Buzz Talk. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. share. Woo.